Laser-guided bombs are arguably the most accurate weapon available to us on the DCS F-16 Viper. In this video, I'll show you how to take advantage of their pinpoint accuracy. Let's go! As always, the very first step is setting up the controls, and please note that this video heavily relies on the information in my targeting pod guide, which is linked in the description and at the top right side of your screen right now. As for the buttons we need to assign, start with camera slash gun trigger first detent. I have it assigned to my trigger's first detent, but if you don't have one, you can bind it to any simple push button. This button fires the laser. Next is WPN REL button depress. This should be assigned to an easily accessible push button. This is the big red button on the stick which releases the bombs. Optionally, you can also bind the NWS nose wheel steering button to a simple push button. Now that we're in the cockpit, the first thing we want to do is arm up the aircraft. This must be done before we start up the aircraft and I'll get to why in just a minute. For now, just make sure your engine is fully shut off. And let's put those bombs on the jet. There are two different laser-guided bombs, the 500-pound GBU-12 and the 2,000-pound GBU-10, which can be mounted on stations 3, 4, 6, and 7. Stations 4 and 6 can only carry one of each of these bombs on each station, while stations 3 and 7 can carry either 1x 2,000-pound GBU-10 or up to 2x 500-pound GBU-12 on each station. For this video, I'll only be taking two times of the 500 pound GB12s on stations 3 and 7 each. I'll also put a fuel bag on stations 6 and 4 each, and don't forget to put the targeting pod on station 5 right. Now I can start arming up the aircraft. Request rearming. While the bombs are being loaded up on the jet, let's change their laser code. Press right shift and K on your keyboard to bring up the kneeboard. The weapon's laser code can only be changed while your aircraft is completely shut off. That's why I told you to keep it so. As you can see on the board, currently our code is set to the default 1688. To change it, you need to use the buttons described here on the side of the kneeboard. The first digit will always be 1, the second digit can move between 5 and 7, and the third and fourth digits can move between 1 and 8. The reason that you might want to change your laser code from the default 1688 is to deconflict with other flights in the area. If you're flying completely alone, then you can definitely keep it as the default 1688. As an example for this video, I'll change it to 1577. I'll press right shift, right alt, and 9 until I get a 5. Right shift, right alt, and zero until I get a seven. And right shift, right alt, and minus until I get another seven. And that is my weapons laser code set. I can press right shift and K again to close the kneeboard. This can also be done in the mission editor by clicking on your aircraft, going to the three dots on the right side. And you can change the second third and fourth digits right here. Again, the first digit is always one, so I'll set mine to one, five, seven, seven. And then don't forget to press Control S on your keyboard to save the changes. And by now we should be fully armed up, so I'll start up the aircraft. And don't forget to give power to your targeting pod by turning on the right hard point. And with the aircraft started up, we need to match the laser code that our TGP will emit with the laser code we set for the bombs. That's done by going to list, then miscellaneous by pressing 0 and 5 to go into the laser page. And because the TGP hasn't finished starting up yet, it shows 0 as the current code. And now that it's fully warmed up and started, it shows the default 1688 code. I'll set it to the one that I set for the bombs, which was again 1577, and press enter. Then you can press return to go back to the main menu, and that's it. So I'll see you in the area in just a moment. As we're flying to the target area, there's one important concept you need to understand to be more successful with your laser-guided bomb drops. 
After dropping a laser guided bomb you will need to orbit your target until the bomb hits so you don't pass the target and block your own targeting pod's laser. Now this doesn't mean that right as soon as you drop the bomb you need to start the orbit because if you do so, around this point you will block the targeting pod's view, mask the laser and the bomb will miss. Instead, because the targeting pod always goes on the right side on the F-16, you want to put the target on your right side and keep it there. To do so, right after dropping the bomb, start a left turn. This turn shouldn't be too shallow but don't pull too hard on your stick either. Once the target is roughly 45 to 90 degrees to your right, which will happen very quickly, start a gentle right hand turn to establish your orbit around the target while adding or reducing pull on the stick to stay at your current altitude and keep the target roughly between 45 and 90 degrees to your right. As soon as the bomb impacts, you can break out of the orbit and prepare for the next drop. So with all that in mind, we can move on to the next part. First, I'll make sure that everything is ready for the drops, so I'll set the master switch to arm. I'll go into the air to ground mode. And very importantly, don't forget to arm your laser. Once the laser is armed, you'll see this L at the bottom left side of the HUD. And let's move on to take a look at the SMS page for these laser guided bombs. At first, by default, you'll be put into the CCIP mode, but usually when dropping laser guided bombs, you'd want to be in the CCRP mode. To switch, press on CCIP and then select CCRP, or you can also just press on the nose wheel steering button that we bound twice to go from CCIP to CCRP. Other than that, you can also select if you want a single or a pair of bombs to release with each drop. I'll keep it that single for now. There are many more options we can play with here, but I want to keep it simple for now, so let's just move on. Lastly, we need to cover the HUD symbology and go through a brief explanation of what's going to happen. Right now, near the center of the HUD, going through it from top to bottom, is the ASL or azimuth steering line. Once you have a target designated, you want to maneuver to make this line go through your flight path marker like so. The F-16 is very strict with the alignment on the ASL when dropping laser guided bombs, so try your best to be right on it. If you go for a drop and your bombs don't release, not being right on the ASL can definitely be the cause. On the left side of the HUD, you'll see your currently selected release mode, which should be set to CCRP. Once you're within 50 nautical miles from your target, on the right side of the HUD there will be a 10 nautical mile marker, a range carrot, a bracket as an indication for tossing and or dropping the bomb, and a 0 nautical mile line. I've seen this right side of the HUD confuse plenty of people before, so here's exactly what it means. Once you're below 10 arc miles away from your target, the range carrot will start moving downwards. The time until the carrot enters the bracket is indicated right here. 4 seconds before it enters the bracket, two horizontal lines will start closing from top and bottom onto your fly path marker. At 1 second beforehand, a circle will start flashing. These together are the toss and max toss anticipation cues. Unless you're going for toss bombing, which I'll cover in a future video, you can completely ignore them. After that, you'll see some more numbers related to toss bombing and you can again just ignore them. The next thing you'll be looking for is the time to release right here. This tiny horizontal line at the top of the ASL and the carrot reaching the bottom of the bracket. When the time to drop reaches 10 seconds to drop, this horizontal line, called the solution queue, will start falling downwards. When that happens, start pressing and holding the weapon release button we've bound earlier and keep holding it. Once the countdown reaches zero, the carrot hits the bottom of the bracket and the solution queue enters your flat path marker, you will hear your bomb release and your flat path marker will flash three times indicating that a bomb has released. You will then start the orbit as I explained and the time to drop will switch into an estimated time to impact. At between 8 to 15 seconds until estimated impact, start lasing by pressing and holding on your trigger first detent or weapon release button. While lasing, the L on the HUD will flash along with the L and the code on the TGP screen. Now just remain in the orbit and keep lasing until the bomb impacts. And check. Now let's do a run of all of this in real time. Okay, so we're heading straight towards the target area right now. And to set up for the attack, I'm gonna need two different pages, the SMS page and the TGP page. 
So I can put the TGP page on the other display. And as I mentioned, this video heavily relies on the information in my targeting pod guide. So if you haven't watched it, make sure to do so, as we're gonna start using it quite a lot now. And the first thing we'll do is sort the TGP by pressing display management switch down until it is boxed. And now we can zoom the FOV in with the FOV button and zoom further in with the range knob. Just as preference, I'll switch it to white hot with target management switch left. This looks like a nice target for our first drop. And for the setup in the SMS page for now, we're gonna keep it as is. And right now, all I'm doing is just making sure the ASL is going through my flat path marker. And just about now, the task queue will show up. There we go. Closing onto the flight path marker. I'm just going to ignore it. So remember that the drop is at the bottom of the bracket, not the top of it. Now the solution queue is starting to drop. I'm pressing and holding the weapon release button. And weapon away. Going to start the orbit by turning left. Keep your flight path marker on the horizon to stay on your altitude. And 15 seconds until impact, I'm going to start lasing with the first stage of the trigger or the weapon release button. They both activate the laser. And I'm just making corrections with the TGP onto the tank right there. Pressing and holding the weapon release. And there we go, Shack. I can release my finger from the laser button and break out of the orbit. Make sure to trim your aircraft after dropping a bomb as you're going to be offset to one side. I'm heading out of the target area to create some separation for the next drop. I suggest between 10 to 15 nautical miles for this next drop. I want to do something slightly differently. So I'm going to switch from a single bomb to a pair of bombs. So that simply means that two bombs are going to release off of the aircraft at the same time instead of just one. And let's go into the control page and go into release angle and change it to zero. Get out of the control page. And what this does is it simply cancels all the symbology for the tossing. I'm going to start turning as I'm more than 50 nautical miles away. But basically, if you find all the task queuing confusing to you, you can turn it off by just setting the release angle to zero in the control page. And leveling off onto the ASL again. And I'm going to use this time of the 50 nautical miles that I have until the target to find a new one. And we have, let's go for this tank. And as you can see now on the ranging cues we no longer have a bracket but just one line this line will be the drop point when the carrot reaches it that's when the bombs will, rele will release as long as we're pressing and holding the weapon release button okay so six five four and there comes the solution cue i'm gonna press and hold the weapon release button and two bombs released from the jet i'm gonna start the orbit you can slightly zoom out on the TGP and correct its position. Um, at 10 seconds before the impact, I can start lasing with my uh, trigger first detent. And here's the target right there. Could hit any second now. And shack, those are two bombs landed on it. And I can start preparing for another drop. And we only have one bomb left nothing on the other wing so i'll switch from pairs to single although obviously if you keep it at uh, pairs it will still drop the single bomb that you have left and another thing that i'll do is go back to the release angle of 45 degrees not because i want to toss the this bomb i just want to go back to the default settings so it will look like uh the default setup which i assume is gonna be the how you're gonna drop most of your laser guided bombs so this is what it will usually look like if you don't change anything okay 13 miles is gonna do it i can start turning back and for this last drop we're gonna drop our remaining bomb 
on a moving target just to show you that laser guided bombs can also be used on moving targets and not just stationary ones try to keep your velocity vector on the horizon line that will keep you at the same altitude and make everything a lot easier and stable for you okay again aligning on that asl and i can find my last target which again i'm gonna go for a moving one here is the convoy of tanks i set up so i'll put my cursor on one of them and then press target management switch up to go into point track and now my tgp will automatically follow it around keep flying on the asl i slightly deviated from it so i need to get back to it again the f-16 is very strict with the alignment on the asl so make sure to be as close as you can here comes the toss queue i'm gonna again just ignore it i will cover toss bombing in a future video here comes the solution queue weapon release button press and hold And here we go, Paveway. Paveway is the radio call for dropping laser guided bombs, or any guided bomb for that matter. Going into the orbit, turn left, and now turn right. 15 seconds or less until the hit, so I'm gonna start lasing with my trigger first hit and Again, just try your best to stay at your same altitude. And the TGP is still following the target. And here we go, Shaq on a moving target with our laser guided bombs. That's basically it, that should cover everything you need to know about dropping laser guided bombs. Anyways, I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you found it helpful, please make sure to like, subscribe and ring that bell. I'm gonna head back to base and for yourself when you're done dropping all your laser guided bombs after watching this video, just make sure to land safely.